on this board one of the cheapest microcontrollers on the market right now that goes only for 10 cents. In this video, we will discuss the hardware design of a custom RISC 5 microcontroller dev board just like this. You will learn how to design your own custom dev board, place a PCB assembly order at GLC PCB, write some firmware to bring up the hardware board, and test its basic functionalities. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB, one of the largest PCB manufacturers in China. More on them later in this video. Let's start off with an overview of the CH32 RISC V microcontroller. This is a block diagram of the microcontroller's architecture. Uh, it's a RISC V CPU that can uh, run at 48 MHz. It has an internal peripherals like timers, uh, UART, I2C, SPI, ADC, operational amplifier, etc. There are different variants of this microcontroller that comes in uh, different packages. And this is the one that we will use for our design today that ends in F4P6. You will find a link to this article in the description of this video uh, where you will find a link for the microcontroller's datasheet reference manual so you can download uh, them. This is the datasheet of the microcontroller. Here is a more detailed system architecture uh, and you will find a lot of details on the reference manual as well. There is also a link for the IDE that we will use for developing uh, firmware for this microcontroller. It's called Mount River Studio or MRS for short. Let's have a look on the stock at JLC PCB. And this is the specific package that I have used in this design that ends in F4 P6. The price has significantly increased uh, over the time due to inflation and stuff. This microcontroller was known on, on the internet as a 10 cents microcontroller however it's not 10 cents right now uh, i believe i bought some uh, microcontrollers on my uh, jlc pcb account which is a good feature in jlc pcb actually that you can buy some uh, microcontrollers or any other parts and save it in your uh, library of stock which can secure your next projects and mitigate any stock issues uh, there are also some people who are uh, selling their uh, own parts from their stock and you can do this as well. This is the schematic design for this dev board that I came up with. You can use it for your own reference. Uh, however, you need to know that there are some parts that can actually be omitted, like this USB to UART uh, bridge or the USB port itself. You can power this microcontroller from any uh, other uh, source. On this board, the DC input voltage comes from the USB port, this is 5 volts. It powers up the USB to UART bridge IC and it goes into this LDO which generates the 3.3 volts required by the microcontroller. Next up is the MCU circuitry which is actually very very simple uh, circuit. The microcontroller needs 3.3 uh, volts, a 100 nanofarad capacitor and a crystal oscillator. The crystal oscillator uh, needs to be 24 megahertz. You can actually use any other value uh, for the crystal oscillator. Uh, however, if you want this microcontroller to run at its maximum speed, which is uh, 48 megahertz, you need to use a 24 megahertz oscillator. This is due to the internal PLL, which is not programmable. It's not uh, configurable and it multiplies the input frequency by two. And that's it. It's not fully programmable like the STM32 microcontrollers, for example. Uh, so in order to get a 48 megahertz uh, clock, you need to input uh, 24 megahertz from a crystal oscillator. Uh, I have added in a reset push button to this uh, pin. Uh, this pin can be used as a GPIO pin. This can be uh, configured in the software and it can also serve as a reset uh, pin. Next up is the debug port, which is only one pin, ground and VCC. And here is the debugger that we will use, WCH link. And this debugger has an embedded USB to UART bridge that you can actually use. Here is the RX TX pin. You can use it for debugging and as well as USB to UART conversion. So we can actually take out this chip and the USB port. For example, if you need to reduce the cost of your uh, dev board, but for my board, I have added uh, this USB to UART uh, bridge and connected the RX and TX pins to the RX and TX pins of the microcontroller, which are these pins. I have actually added uh, two touch buttons for this uh, board 
and this is specific to my case because I needed to evaluate some algorithms using this board but for you you may you may need to uh, expose all of the pins so you can use all of these GPIO pins connect them to uh, one or two uh, ports this also applies to those uh, LEDs that can be used as digital outputs high or low uh, or also uh, PWM outputs to be able to use PWM you need to make sure that you are connecting the LED pins to timer output channels in my case the LED 1 and 2 are going for the uh, timer 1 channel 3 and timer 1 channel 4 those are the PWM outputs for my LEDs and this is everything in the schematic design let's open up KCAD this is the schematic after finishing up your schematic you can use uh, this tool to assign the footprints or you can assign the footprints from the bomb uh, I recommend using this uh, tool in order to add the GLC PCP uh, part numbers you will search for your part let's say uh, 100 nanofarad this uh, capacitor C1 C2 and so on and you will decide the package that you are going to use consolidate your bomb uh, design by selecting a package size that will fit in all of these positions and will handle the input voltage uh, at each of these nodes this will actually reduce the end cost of your uh, board after finishing this up save and go to the next step which is the PCB layout and the routing uh, this is the layout of this uh, design it's very simple there is no high speed uh, communications on this uh, board even the USB is not high speed so you should have an easy time laying out a board like this and the routing is point to point connections for my board uh, there is a special part which is these uh, touch sensors uh, as you can see there is a, a cut out space around the sensors uh, on both layers and we will get to this in a later video where we will discuss the CVD algorithm that this board was designed to evaluate and now after completing the hardware design you should run a DRC check to, to see if there is any errors and if your design is fine you can now move to the last step which is to generate the fabrication files for this process I use this fabrication toolkit plugin in KiCad uh, which is designed for GLC PCB this will generate all the files needed by GLC PCB in order to pick up your design and start the manufacturing process you will upload your Gerber file at GLC PCB and check the fabrication options which we will do right now here is the GLC website click on this to upload your Gerber file this is my Gerber file I will upload it and as you can see it has detected my design it's a two layer board with those dimensions select this color for a two layer board the matte black finish for the PCB will cost you nothing uh, however if you go, go to uh, four layers or more you will uh, get out of the standard uh, PCB assembly uh, uh, option and it will cost you much more and I will leave all the other options as is for this very simple design we don't need to change anything and I will enable the PCB assembly I will assemble only two boards on the top side and that's it we will move to the next step here is a 2d preview of our board top and bottom sides and here we will upload the bomb file and the component positions for the SMT assembly here is my bomb file and here is the positions and we will proceed uh, as you can see the GLC PCB system has picked up all the parts from our bomb file in my case this RISC-5 microcontroller is actually in my parts library I have a stock of these uh, microcontrollers so it's going to use uh, my parts that's why the cost is zero uh, for this uh, specific uh, entry this page also tells you the type of each part if it's a basic or extended part for each unique part in your bomb file that is extended you will pay three USDs uh, in my design there are four extended parts I told you why I couldn't omit this uh, crystal because I need to reach the maximum speed of this microcontroller however if you uh, used uh, like a 16 megahertz oscillator it will be uh, a standard part and it will not cost you uh, that much USB to UART bridge this is unavoidable and this USB-C 
port, uh, port is not also uh, avoidable, so I will keep it as it is. I will proceed. Uh, you can optimize your uh, BOM file to, re to reduce the number of uh, non-standard parts uh, as much as possible. And here is the 2D view of my uh, board with the components placed. I will right click and drag it to the middle of the screen just like this zoom in a, a little bit right click and drag again as you can see this USB port is not placed in the correct pla uh, place I can change it here you don't need to uh, go back to the positions file uh, and edit it manually in Excel etc this can be done here I will click on this and using the arrow keys on your keyboard you can move it down just like this uh, to make sure that the pins of the USB are going through the holes I will move to the 3d view and zoom in here and that looks much better uh, okay uh, you need also to check all of the ICs on your board for me the microcontroller itself is placed correctly uh, however the USB to UART uh, bridge is rotated as you can see the pin number one should be here so I will click on the chip and rotate it right this is correct this IC is placed correctly the LEDs you should always always check the LEDs because while you are generating the position file from uh, KCAD the system of GLC PCB may pick up those um, diodes or LEDs uh, in a wrong way so you need always to check it uh, that looks fine and we will proceed and here you can select a uh, research or DIY project this code and save it to your cart pay for the order and wait for your board uh, to arrive uh, now after receiving my board I will start uh, with this test example which will use the GPIO pins of the microcontroller to turn on and off those uh, onboard LEDs those LEDs LED 1 and 2 we will blink the onboard LEDs alternatively each one for half a second uh, let's open the Mount River studio and create a new project Mount River project and here you choose your uh, microcontroller port CH32V003 F4P6 this is my port this is a project template saved in the IDE itself which is a non OS application you can rename the project uh, as you want and click on finish this is the GPIO test application uh, I will open the user files this is the main.c uh, you can copy and paste this example code for the GPIO test that we will go through right now this is the initialization function that I have created to initialize the two uh, GPIO pins uh, which are pin C3 and C4 let's get back to the schematic design here are my LEDs and they are going to C3 and C4 pins so I have to enable the clock for the GPIO C or port C we will define the pin number and the pin mode output push pull and the GPIO pin speed this is the maximum speed for GPIO pins and call the initialization function we will repeat the same for the pin number 4 and by calling this function those two pins are configured to be outputs then in the main loop I will call the GPIO set bits and reset bits to control the GPIO pin states and that's all we will click on the build all button this project is now built I will connect my microcontroller to the uh, debugger here is the connection of the microcontroller to the de debugger as you can see on this board this is the debug port plus 3.3 uh, volts ground and the software I open I will connect those three wires to my uh, debugger ground VCC which is 3.3 and finally the SWIO pin and that's all let me connect the debugger to my uh, PC and it's now connected to flash the firmware application we need to click on this download button and it will just flash the microcontroller and the application is now running uh, you can actually debug your uh, application using this button place some breakpoints step through the code uh, use the serial uh, monitor use uh, live expressions and every other feature that you are used to in Ex Eclipse is uh, here this uh, IDE is based on Eclipse nothing is uh, different but you need to pay attention the datasheet and the microcontroller architecture 
and the software or the firmware libraries in this uh, IDE may may look like it's uh, a high copy of STM32 microcontrollers. Even the variable names, the functions, the structures, uh, you should not assume this. It's not like STM32 microcontrollers on both the hardware level on and the software level. So you should always double check the documentation and the uh, firmware libraries before using them. Now we have our first project running. Let's do another uh, test. We will uh, use the PWM outputs for this uh, microcontroller on the same two LEDs. We will create a new project and follow the same steps. Uh, and here is the application of the PWM. This is the main file. And this is the initialization function. This function takes in the auto reload register value, the prescaler value, and the output pulse duration or text value. It initializes the PWM pins. C3 and C4 initializes the timer one, which will be used for the PWM generation, and in it initializes also the output com compare uh, unit number three and four. For the PWM channels number three and four, which happens to be connected to my onboard LEDs, and this uh, while uh, loop does the fading uh, effect. The LEDs will fade alternatively. The duty cycle will increase for the LED number one while it decreases for num uh, LED number two and they will flip. The auto reload register is set to this value which will dictate the maximum duty cycle value for the PWM and this is the value for the prescaler and the initial output pulse duty cycle will be zero. Uh, to change the duty cycle you have to write to this uh, CVR register for each channel, channel number three and four. This is how you apply the duty cycle to the PWM channels of a specific timer. My uh, pins are connected to the PWMs of the uh, timer number one. Change the duty cycle and reverse when you hit the maximum uh, value. And this is a one millisecond delay between uh, each step. Let's compile this application as well and flash it to our microcontroller. And there you go. By the end of this, you should have learned how to create your custom CH32V RISC V microcontroller dev board or use this microcontroller in your next project. My intention behind designing this board that I have shown you today is to evaluate the possibility of using a cheap microcontroller like the CH32V for touch sensing applications using the CVD algorithm or technique which could significantly offload the cap touch sensor sampling task from the main application processor and thankfully it uh, does succeed in uh, doing this task as I have initially anticipated and here is a sneak peek of what's coming up next. We will go in more detail about this uh, capacitive touch sensing uh, application in a later video and we will also uh, revisit this RISC-V microcontroller project to make a more uh, minimalistic version of this board shown in this uh, picture. I've actually uh, designed and manufactured it. We will discuss it in a later video. I hope you have found this uh, helpful. If you have any further questions or comments, leave it down below and I will see you next time.